why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and your background? Uh, sure. Um, I'm a, what we could say a researcher in action. So I um, I did um, a postdoc in uh, Chicago on uh, self determination of uh, indigenous peoples. And uh, since uh, quite a while now, I'm working on uh, indigenous issues within the industry. Uh, it used to be with the construction industry. Now it's, it's a bit more with mining and energy kind of industry. And uh, most of my research are on, uh, not research, but um, actions and uh, uh, projects uh, are on indigenous peoples and mainly the integration, the inclusion of indigenous peoples into uh, project development and could be in the south and in the north of the Quebec and Canada. Fascinating. So, so what led you to pursue your career and uh, your line of study as well? It comes from uh, different work I did with um, different organizations such as the uh, Canadian Panel on Violence Against Women and I had to go through um, um, many, many uh, Aboriginal communities all over Canada. So that's probably why I decided to work a little bit more closely on issues related to Indigenous people and women, of course. So when I had the opportunity to work in Montreal on those topics, specific topics, it was uh, perfect to me. And making sure that Indigenous people are included in projects where um, most of the projects are on resource territory, then it makes sense to make sure that they are part of the project. But today my work as a consultant is to negotiate agreements such as uh, IBAs between mining companies and the indigenous nations and tribes. And of course in all those agreements I, I have the chance to make sure that other groups such as women, indigenous women are well involved and the youth also into uh, the development of uh, anything related to uh, uh, the development of their territories. To that point, can you discuss the evolving relationship between Indigenous people, uh, Indigenous women, youth, and mining projects, and, and what are some of the challenges, perhaps past and present, and what are some of the successes uh, that you've seen so far? Well, the transformation is happening since at least, uh, since at least the beginning of the 90s, and it, I must say that it started slow. Uh, but one of the major events was the judgment of uh, the Supreme Court on the Ida and Taku rivers on the obligation to consult and accommodate indigenous people. So we saw since that judgment, uh, and so in 2004, a uh, major increase in agreements, MOU, IBAs between uh, um, companies and indigenous people. Uh, of course, the relationship is much better than we think now. Uh, there's no choice since they are on resource land territories, I would say that indigenous people that have a major territory have a good bargaining power with the companies uh, and mining companies. But at the same time, I would say that mining companies have also, if it's well planned in advance, uh, they, have, uh, they will have access to a great indigenous workforce, which is very important for mining companies uh, those days. Um, what we saw since 20 years is, uh, uh, is a focus, is a switch of focus from training and employment to contract opportunities. But now indigenous uh, peoples are shareholders and they have now indigenous mining companies and they are the ones who want to develop their own territories, which is different and makes sense. What do you think that mining organizations can learn from working with Indigenous people? Of course, Indigenous people have their own knowledge and tradition and awareness of the landscape. So what can mining organizations learn from working with Indigenous people? And how can some of that Indigenous knowledge um, of the land and so forth be integrated into this relationship? Yeah, this is an important question. Uh, I'm not even sure that Indigenous peoples realize how important it can be how mining companies could be useful for them for anything related to traditional knowledge. It's not just about land, but it's about a different way of life. So they have a very good, uh, um, how can I say, there is a good 
uh, it's very relevant for them both to work together on that. And uh, ITP, which is traditional knowledge, uh, could prevent environmental disaster. So that's one of the main reasons why they should work together. In your opinion, what further me measures then should be taken to create a healthy and, and perhaps most importantly, a mutually beneficial and sustainable relationship between Indigenous people um, and mining operations? Well, there's a need for greater involvement in every aspect of the mine life cycle. cycles. We should look not just at many either. Many mining companies are telling me that they prefer indigenous women operator because they can, they are careful of their engines, of their trucks. They care of it. Uh, there's a need of, uh, the, uh, there's a need of, for a vision and a plan. It has to start at the first stage of the project. So as soon as they get involved with indigenous companies, better they will develop a, um, a good process for their own development of a mining site. Of course, you also need to manage the expectations uh, from indigenous community. And to do that, uh, making sure that indigenous are involved since the beginning, they will know what they need to do in order to be involved, uh, fully involved in the project. As you may know, there is a focus on integrating Indigenous concerns uh, and uh, teachings and, and elaborating this conversation uh, in the CIM convention program. In your opinion, why is that important that, that these, these conversations happen? If we have a, a content that interests them, and we will have content that interests them if we get uh, something very uh, relevant for them. It, it's like the chicken and egg challenge. You need to make sure that they are there, but they will be there only if they see their, uh, that it is relevant for them. So I think it's easier for CIM to start the conversation and getting uh, some interest people that work, work already on the field. And then we can, after that, look at uh, finding indigenous uh, um, uh, interest and making sure that uh, indigenous are members are becoming involved more and more with CIM. Indigenous that will come uh, in the conference also need to be able to compare and get leading practices within the industry. And we should not forget that we have um, we have the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and mm -hmm. from that report, we uh, there's a call for action, and there's the action number 92 that asks companies to do a little bit more for. Uh, indigenous peoples and to understand a little bit more what's coming from indigenous peoples and this is probably what we are looking at for the CIM, the 2018 CIM Commission, uh, CIM, uh, Convention, sorry, and it's it's about um, uh, a discussion. We will have a workshop, a multi-stakeholder dialogue workshop on that specific topic which is reconciliation and how do we, uh, how is it, uh, how we can work on that uh, reconciliation.